Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. And welcome to those watching online here at Gethsemane Church in Keyport. Um, in, in summer, I do preaching series. Um, I have four different series this summer. I'm, this is the third and final week on 2 Peter. Um, it's about um, Christ's return and, and uh, Christ's time frame and what time means for God. So remember that. Um, Val Santa Maria is in a nursing home now and is doing all right. Well, rehab. She's in a rehab. Um, praying for Good Shepherd and Lindenwald. Um, our organist is on vacation, so we are having piano music today. Um, I will be gone this week for business. Um, Ed Kropa and Freehold um, will cover for emergencies. Um, the boat trip is this coming Saturday, the 22nd, out of um, Islands, Atlantic, Islands. Atlantic Islands. Thank you was not coming up with that. Um, not that my wife never worked in that town for 20 years, but I went to Kyle. Uh, and, and so, um, so if you are going on a boat trip and you don't know how to find the boat because you have to know the secret information at the marina, um, ask me after church and I'll be happy to tell you how to find the boat. Also, usually I try to get there like 4.15 because we're saying boarding at 4.30, leave no later than five, um, to stand in a parking lot in the sun and tell people how to go. And if you are watching online and you want to go to the boat trip, there are still spots. Call the church office. We'll get you in there. Um, all right. Let's take a moment of quiet. Please rise and join me for the confession, which is in the green bowl. Mm -hmm. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who greets us in this and every season, whose word never fails, whose promise is sure. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of our neighbors. Merciful God, we confess that we have sinned. We have hurt our community. We have squandered your blessings. We have thwarted your bounty. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. Righteous God, we confess that we have sinned. We have failed to be honest. We have lacked the courage to speak. We have spoken falsely. In the name of Jesus, forgive us and grant us your mercy. God is a cup of cold water when we thirst. God offers boundless grace when we fail. Claim the gift of God's mercy. You are freed and forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, amen. amen. Please rise as you are able. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Peace to everybody. Our first hymn is, O oh God, Our Help in Ages Past, which is 632, and we are singing verses 1 and 4, um, 1 and 4. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. 
Lord, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. For this holy house and all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Help, save, comfort, and defend us graciously. Amen. Let us pray. Stir up your power, Lord Jesus, and come. By your merciful protection, save us from the threatening dangers of our sins and enlighten our walk in the way of your salvation. For you live and reign with your Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated for the readings. The first lesson is taken from 2 Peter, the third chapter, beginning at the first verse. Dear friends, this is now my second letter to you. I have written both of them as reminders to stimulate you to wholesome thinking. I want you to recall the words spoken in the past by the holy prophets and the command given by our Lord and Savior through your apostles. Above all, you must understand that in the last days scoffers will come, scoffing and following their own evil desires. They will say, where is this coming? He promised. Ever since our ancestors died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. But they deliberately forget that long ago, by God's word, the heavens came into heaven, came into being, and the earth was formed out of water and by water. By these waters also, the world of that time was deluged and destroyed. By the same word, the present heaven and earth are reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar, the elements will be destroyed by fire, and the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. Therefore, dear friends, since you have been forewarned, be on your guard so that you may not be carried away by the error of the lawless and fall from your secure position, but grow in the grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. The Gospel of our Lord according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, Therefore keep watch, because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this, that the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming, he would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready, because the Son of Man will come in an hour when you do not expect him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. Um, you may be seated. On July 1st, um, I observed 25 years as being the pastor of this congregation. Um, never saw that coming when I started. <laughs> um, I recently um, observed um, 33 years of ordination, and, and I had a significant birthday last year where I turned 60. And my feeling on my birthday last year was not, oh man, I'm old. My, my feeling was, how did 60 years go by? 
you know, you know. And, and that's kind of where I am, like, you know, how, how have we been together here 25 years? Um, and when, when I was in seminary in the 80s and Ronald Reagan was president, <laughs> um, you know, I was going to change the world. I was going to fix everything wrong with the church. Um, everything was going to be great. It was going to be perfect. Um, and, you know, and, and I and my classmates, we were the ones to do it. Um, we had visions, we had dreams. Um, really didn't turn out like I thought it might. <laughs> um, and certainly I did not expect the church to be in the situation it is. Um, I know I talk about this, I pray for today that this isn't something I ever need to preach about. Um, but, but just thinking the organized church, and I'm gonna talk about some Lutheran numbers, but way bigger than us, you know, is this really, when I was ordained, um, the denomination in America had about 500 members. I think we're below three, five million members. I think we're below three million now. When I was ordained in 1990, there's 208 congregations in New Jersey. Now there's, I believe, 153. And, and so, you know, things just, and I don't think anybody saw this coming. I'm actually pretty positive that in 1990, no one saw this coming. Um, and so I can echo um, with this passage here in 2 Peter what's really going on I told you 2 Peter is, is a letter written to encourage orthodoxy among a particular um, Christian community and it's using claiming to be um, St. Peter so it's using that authority however where most scholars, myself included, are really convinced this was written about 100 years after the time Jesus ascended. Peter's, Peter died around 56 or 60. Okay. So this is written, like, we think as late as 130, maybe. But they're using Peter's authority. Um, and that's not uncommon. Right? Have you ever watched a movie from Walt Disney that was made in the last 20 years? <laughs> a Disney movie? We know Walt's dead, right? Okay, it's the same kind of thing. They're, they're claiming Peter's authority, that they're in line with that. Okay, um, and so um, what's happening, though, is the dispute is about some people 100 years after the time of Jesus who don't think Christ is going to return. And, of course, Orthodox Christianity, as specified in the Apostles' Creed, says what? Oh, come on, you know this. Christ is going to return, right? We believe in the second coming. And so, so that's the issue. But I can see how, because the people really, at the time Jesus ascended, really expected to see Jesus return in their lifetime. This, there's, a, there's biblical evidence to support, there's lots of biblical evidence to support that statement. They really thought Jesus was going to return. So when these people like Paul and Peter and James and John started to die, it really did become a crisis. You know, is God going to return? And I, and I know that for myself now, sometimes when I look around with a lot of issues, even bigger than the church, I'm like, Jesus, you know, if you're going to return, today would be a really good day to do that. You know, the planet's getting hotter and hotter. Um, the last 12 months set a record for gun violence in this country. You know, and so, you know, Jesus, if you want to come, now be real, real nice. Um, but it hasn't happened yet. And yet St. Peter encourages us not to lose hope. Jesus' passage here that he says right before he ascends, that's where this is, this gospel passage is from the resurrected Jesus. It says, you don't know when I'm going to return, so keep awake, keep going, be ready. And I think for the church, these words about God's time being different than our time are really valuable. Because we live in a society where we can get most things when? Now. And we can get them delivered. And if I want my Pizza Hut delivery delivered, oh no, it's Domino's. If I want my Domino's pizza delivered right here, all I have to do on the app is pin it. I, I don't think it's so I can get pizza during church. I think it's like if I'm on the beach or something, but anyway. Um, but, but I could, 
you know how many times that that pizza delivery is going to the wrong door to the church? It'd be great. But anyway, um, but the fact is, and, and so we were used to that immediate stuff. And yet, a lot of things don't happen just now, right? And a lot of things on the planet don't happen just now. And God's time is different than our time, but it doesn't mean that God isn't right. My ministry is very different than I envisioned. One, I said I would never do a church in suburbia. Last 25 years of my ministry. Um, the other one, as I said, is I, because I was a campus pastor in my first, I said I don't do old people. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and and you know and, and the campus ministry thing I'm not the campus ministry. My my worship services in the nursing homes are one of the funnest things I do. They keep me on my toes. Um plus they're just so happy to see you, you know. It's like, oh someone's happy to see me. But anyway, but the fact is, I've had a great ministry, but it's not what I envision, all right? And the issues that we are facing now together are not the ones I thought we would face together 30 years ago. But they are the ones we have, for better or for worse. And Peter, or the author of Peter, reminds us that in the midst of this, God is working. And that God's time is very different than our time. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years is like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping God's promises, as some understand slowness. Instead, God is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, and everyone to come to repentance. But the day of the Lord will come. And that is truly great news. But in the meanwhile, God is with us now in our ministry to our neighbors, now and always. Amen. I invite you to rise as you are able. And we're going to sing all three verses of hymn 805. Yes, lead on, O King.
I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered in Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and he is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and everybody according to their needs. Almighty God, we do pray for hope, for ourselves and for the world. Help us to see that we can trust in you and that your promises are sure. Lord, in your mercy. Sure. Lord, we do pray for peace and safety and end to violence in our streets, nightclubs, neighborhoods, houses of worship, and of course among the nations at war. Lord, in your mercy. Sure. And Lord, we pray that you we would help us to love others as you love us and to know that we are forgiven through you and we in turn can forgive our neighbor. Lord, in your mercy. Sure. Lord, we do pray for safety and heat here and around the world as many places experience record days of heat. Lord, in your mercy. Your and Lord, we pray for those who prepare, grow, and harvest our food. We especially remember day laborers. Lord, in your mercy. Your and Lord, we pray for the church in all places. Particularly, we lift up Good Shepherd and Linden Wool. Lord, in your mercy. Your Lord, we remember those who have died and rested. No, we remember those who are sick, who need your healing and your care, and that you would be with them and their caregivers. We especially pray for Jeannie Barbara, Rhett Sims, Marie O'Leary, Heather D. Gregorio, Paul, Pauline, Gordon, Doris, and Ed, Ted, Jackie, Dominic, Bill Griman, Rose Adams, our military and the families, Pastor and his family, and Harriet. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. And Lord, we do remember those who have died and rest in you. We especially thank you for the life of Lee and those we remember before you now. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy now and always. Amen. Amen. You may be seated while we bring forth the offering. Should at all times and all places give thanks and praise to you, Almighty and 
merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all choirs of angels, the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name and join the unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, in mercy for our fallen world, who gave your only Son, that all those who believe in him should not perish, but have him hurled. We give thanks to you for the salvation you have prepared for us through Jesus Christ. Send now your Holy Spirit into our hearts that we may receive our Lord with a living faith as he comes to us in this holy supper. Amen. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup, blessed it, and gave it for all the drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. These are gifts of God for the people of God. Come in. So for those who are taking communion in the pew, we're going to do that right now. The body of Christ is given for you. The blood of Christ is shed. And once David and I are set up, the rest of you may come. The other one's not here. Is it? Is it? Yeah. We're going to hear really enjoyable music for a little while. <laughs>
We thank you, generous God, for the refreshment we have received at your banquet table. Send us now to spread your generosity into all the world through the one who is our dearest treasure, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. Go in peace. Serve the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.